Good evening, everyone. Uh, I send greetings from the United States to you in Brazil who are attending the EMI conference in celebration of EMI Lichtenfeld's 100th birthday. Uh, I'd like to start by paying my respects uh, to Sandra and to Master Kobe for hosting this really amazing event. This is really the first time that someone has stepped forward to host an event where all the masters from Krav Maga could be in one place to share their knowledge, their interpretation, their love of Krav Maga with students who are eager and hungry to learn the system. Uh, one thing that Emi left the world were his top teachers uh, to spread Krav Maga, real Krav Maga, to the people who need it, the people in law enforcement, the people in military, and to civilians, so that his dream of people living in peace could become a reality. And the one thing that drove Emi Lichtenfeld was that he wanted people to feel secure with who they were. He wanted people to feel like they would be able to go outside in the world, live their life the way they chose to live it, and be able to walk in peace with a certain dignity, with confidence, and with security. Um, I would have to say that Emi was like a, like a grandfather to me. And when I first started training in Krav Maga in 1981, Emi was uh, kind enough, and I was fortunate enough, that he, he took me under his wing. And very early on, he told me that uh, he would come to be with me in the United States to train me, to train my students. And he really wanted uh, Krav Maga to be something special, not just in the United States, but outside of Israel. And he felt that what a better gift what could there possibly be than to give the gift of safety and security and confidence from this small state of Israel to the rest of the world? And in that way, he felt like an ambassador uh, for humanity because everybody struggles with wanting to be secure and safe. And he felt that that could be the greatest gift, his legacy, for the world. Um, I think I'd like to share one story with you, if I can, briefly, but I, th I think it tells you, or will tell you, how Emi used to think. And Emi used to always tell me all the time that he was a lazy one, meaning he was very lazy, he liked to take things easy, he liked to keep everything simple. And one time I bought a car, and I was excited to show Emi this car, and Emi came to Los Angeles from Israel, and the first thing I wanted him to see was this brand new car that I had. And uh, Emi didn't say a word, he looked at the car, made no special attention over it. He sat in the car, and I was just so eager inside for him to say something positive about the car. And he's looking, and I see he's shaking his head. This isn't good. He just kept shaking his head negatively. I said, Emi, what's the matter? He said, look at this car. It's so fancy. It looks so nice. But it's not a good car. I want you to get rid of the car. I said, what do you mean I want, you want me to get rid of the car? It's my, it's my first, it's my most favorite car. How could you want me to get rid of the car? He said, I want to show you something. The seatbelt. The seatbelt here. It's, I can't reach the seatbelt here if I go like this. It's too far back. The way the seat's shaped, I can't turn this way to get to the seatbelt. I can't turn this way to reach the seatbelt. If you don't make things easy for people, they won't do it. And you know what that means, Darren? Seatbelts save lives. And if you can't put your seatbelt on, then someone can be injured when they didn't have to be injured. Because if it's not simple for them to do, they won't do it. And I was thinking, oh my God, he overthinks everything. He just thinks about things all the time, little things. He would think about all the time and examine things. But what it came down to was something very simple. Keep it simple. Keep things and design things that were natural for the body to do, that were easy for the body to do, and it always had a special importance to him if it meant people would be safer by how you design something, whether it be a seatbelt or a defense against a knife or a gun or a stick. And that was Emi Lichtenfeld right there. He knew the human body, he knew how it moved, and he wanted to give safety and security to people through movement. 
so that they can defend themselves in a time of need. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I just want to say again, congratulations to you for attending this fantastic conference. It's been my honor to address you and my regret that I can't be with you today, or this evening rather, to celebrate. Shalom.